Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a guide on how to use a golem solo to hunt Triglavians in high sec. And you can earn about 150 million isk an hour doing this. Potentially a lot more as well if you get good spawns. Because the thing is, when you're hunting Triglavians, sometimes you can get bad spawns, which will be more towards 150 million isk an hour. Sometimes you can get really good spawns that are more towards much more than 150 million isk an hour. So what even is Triglavian hunting in a high sec? Basically what has happened here is that since the Triglavian invasion, there are certain high sec systems that were taken over by Triglavians. You can see this by going in the cog here, sort by security status, and you see these red systems in the middle of high sec? These are Pochvan systems. And how it works is that the systems that are relatively close, in terms of like absolute distance, the high sec systems, there's a likelihood that they can spawn a Pochvan wormhole in there, like a wormhole that leads to Pochvan. Now the thing is, in these high sec systems with a Pochvan wormhole, they can spawn in then Triglavian fleets. As you can see here on the D-scan, I can see these Triglavians right here. And you can hunt these guys, kill them, salvage the wrecks, loot the wrecks, and get some really good isk. So that's in short how this activity works. How you can find these uh, Triglavian wormhole systems easily is if you go to these different high sec systems that are pretty close to these systems right here, and just go in a very fast frigate, and then you can just scan here on the D-scan and look for them. So the way you would set up that filter is then if you were to go here on D-select all and then type Triglavian entities, take this and then save this as like Triglav say, uh, Triglavians here. And then well, you would then go in the D-scan filter and take Triglavians here and you can see a filter with just Triglavians. And so you can D-scan every time you go from system to system to try to find them. Another way you can find Triglavians in high sec is also to go to this website, edencom.space go on the Triglavian tracker and you can actually find Triglavians this way. These are people who in this really awesome community who focus a lot on killing Triglavians because they're really they don't like that Triglavians invaded New Eden. So what they do is they have uh, occasionally when people in this community then find systems with Triglavians in, they report them here. Thing is there's not always every single wormhole in here. For example, we're in the system of Uranienen and we don't see that here because i mean it's players who do this not everyone can be everywhere at the same time so like there can be some systems that are not here but this is actually an unusually low activity time of the day when it comes to these trackers right here many times i see so many systems leading here and like the latest add was maybe like 20 30 minutes ago so really this is a really good way if you can't be bothered to go around scanning so then when you found a system with triglavian wormholes you can then scan the wormhole down so in my leshat killer which is what i call my golem i have actually this uh, Dramiel right here and this Dramiel is really good to carry around with you because it can be used then to scan down the wormhole when there's a high sex you find Triglavians in you can use this ship to scan it down and the reason I took the Dramiel in particular is because it's really quick so it's really got fast warp speed fast align time it's really good because I can just use this also to be a look at small hauling ships in case I need some supplies or I want to even find more Triglavians I can use this to travel around very quickly so this is a really nice ship to carry in your frigate escape bay but you may as well carry a magnet as well in fact the magnet would be a lot simpler and sometimes even when i've got a using this for something else i would maybe would even carry a magnet in this golem right here so let's go over to the golem fit right here it is a pretty extensive fit like it's got it's not a cheap fit it costs three billion here and then also i've got a full set of high grade crystals in here you don't need like all these extra implants here, but the full high grade crystal set is uh, quite important. So when it comes to the fit here, this is why I use then to do travel fit. So when I'm traveling then between like, for example, Jeter and the system with Triglavians and I'll use this fit right here with an MWD and cloak. This is good because you can do the MWD cloak trick to get potentially across gate camps or someone who wants to, you know, maybe gank you or something like that. We're going to be in high sec. We're not going to be in low sec, but this is just so that we stay on a bit of a more low profile. So when I am in the system, I want to hunt Triglavians in, I'll then unequip this cloaking device, put a salvager here, unequip this uh, MWD, and then I'll put a large cap battery in here. Now you could even switch around these uh, utility highs right here. You could put maybe two tractor beams or maybe three salvages, whatever you want. But I think the two salvages is the best. But I have tried even two tractor beams and it can in certain circumstances be good as well. But I think the two tra salvages and one tractor beam is the best for solo activity. So you can see here, we're not particularly cap stable with this fit. And it's okay. It doesn't matter. Because the thing is, these Triglavians, they don't newt a lot. They do newt, but they don't loot, uh, newt a lot. We have two cap batteries, so we've got very good newt resistance. And the main thing is here, is that when these Triglavians spawn, 
they can have extremely high DPS, but only for a short period of time. So that's why it is very safe. Then being able to use this booster for four minutes is extremely safe. So that's why I have even some cap modules here just to keep me to be able to get, keep it going. But I'm not going all the way to be cap stable. And we've got a crazy boost rate you can see here. So really good, really good. This is how this tank never challenged. It's just such a such a good ship right here. I also carry some of these boosters right here, some basic boosters. Now, these are some hard shell one and synth blue pills. I you don't really need these, but I prefer to have them just in case. And then I have this crash booster as well. This is very good because it increases your applicability of your torpedoes right here because we're going to be using torpedoes. The way these NPCs here work is that they will be brawling at zero. We'll be just going straight in. And they'll max the furthest away NPC will be a Leshak that will be orbiting us at 43, 42 kilometers. So that's why torpedoes are really good because they have pretty much the optimal like, range for this. We've got these expanded cargo holes, which we could also put there if we wanted the whole loot because the loot from the salvage is actually uh, pretty beastly in terms of its size right here. So we're going to instead put these expanded cargo holes in the container right here. And then I'm also what I do is when I go to the system, I mark a certain area as my like restock location. So for example, this citadel right here, I've marked this as my restock location. And then we're going to go straight in. This missile guidance computer is here to increase applicability with the precision script, but it is also able to then switch it to the optimal range script in case we were to, for example, get a guidance disruptor so we can have better range. So that's why I have this here. Otherwise, I think two target painters would be better, but I like the ability to switch to range if I really need to in case I'm being guidance disrupted hard. So I've scanned down the wormhole here. And what I do is when I scan down the wormhole, I put a tag so that it's like JDS. I put JDS on this. This is so that I can know that like say later I come back and I can see, oh, JDS is still in the system. Then I know that uh, the wormhole is still here. I can still keep farming Triglavians because sometimes you can't always see them on the D scan. They can be in some different part of the system. But anyway, I scan down this wormhole. I'm going to warp to zero on this wormhole. I bookmarked this before. Don't warp to zero on this uh, core probe scanner here because this is going to put you a little bit further away from the wormhole. Uh, the thing is, these Triglavians, there's two fleets. There's a wormhole fleet and then there are these roaming Rasnaborg fleets. And the, the Rasnaborg fleets can be also called just recon fleets. And the way it works is that the wormhole fleet is here. They are like guarding this wormhole. And then when you destroy them, the Triglavians are going to be very angry and then they will not respawn on the wormhole, but they'll be respawning a lot of these fleets around the system at planets and also the suns, just celestials in general. So we're going to first go in here and siege this wormhole, what I call a siege this wormhole. And we're going to go here, put the precision script in. Make sure you're carrying a mobile tractor unit because this is very useful. Deploy this and activate your hardeners and your precision script and we're going to go straight in so how i do this is that i use caldari navy on cruise and smaller on rage i use that with anything with like battle cruises and bigger so battle cruises and battleships i use the rage on but sometimes you know there could be maybe a lot of uh, battleships and maybe one cruiser so then i'll use rage even on that last cruiser because it's not a big difference in applicability but there is some so we see here, we kill them very quickly. Also mark your mobile tractor unit could be good for later. And don't go through this wormhole. This will take you to Poch when you don't want that to happen because maybe someone will camp you on the other side. But we are going to be just destroying these Triglavians right here. And what we can do here is while we are even uh, killing these guys, we can just salvage these guys in the meantime. So it's very good in that regard. And just salvage them right here. Salvage, salvage. But, oh, we forgot to put Bastion on. <laughs> go shoot this guy and then just wreck these guys. It's just simple as that, simple as that. And they will spawn in more, so we we need to destroy these. Like there, it'll be a big a bigger fleet right here. And the way we know that we've cleared the wormhole fleet is that we'll get a tick. Then we know that we've like cleared the wormhole fleet. Then they won't spawn in any new ones. So when you've destroyed this fleet, then you'll be then able to go around and hunt them in the system. And these are the ones that will respawn. The, the ones in the system will keep respawning and respawning until this wormhole despawns. This wormhole has a lifespan of about. 12 to 24 hours something like that i've never really found out that these uh, last longer than uh 24 hours and like you can see here we don't need to use a shield booster so it doesn't matter that we're not cap stable because we just need to boost it occasionally but we still have a very inherently good capacitor so like let's see here if we turn off this shield booster we still have a really good capacitor even though they are newts on the grid we won't be neutered out so it's very safe we can then do a little bit of salvaging and the dps priority list here is that the most DPS comes from the Leshaks 
Then after that, the DPS comes from the Red Max. Those are the two like priorities you could say there are. And there are three types of uh, like uh, tiers of NPCs. There's Raznaborg, which is the weakest. Then there's standard ones with no name. And what I mean by no name is if we see if we can find one here. Anchoring Kikimori. See here? There's no name here. It's just Kikimori and anchoring, which is telling you what it does. It warp scrambles. So this is an intermediate one, like in terms of tank and damage. And then the most deadly one are the Hospodar ones. And if it is Hospodar Liminal, that's even worse. It's a lot, lot more deadly. We tank really good. Like you can see, we just have to pulse. It's just all it is. Just pulse, pulse, pulse. It's like never the case I have to leave these running. We can even use our combat drones to fight a bit. They don't have so they don't like switch aggro so often. They do sometimes, but very rarely. Don't use salvage drones though when you are fighting these guys because they will absolutely annihilate them. They will wreck them very hard <laughs> because they don't like you salvaging their uh, their dead comrades, these Triglavians, and we've got to salvage even ourselves. And this is overall a lot better than the Chronos fit I used before. It's got much more tank, much more DPS, and we apply the DPS a lot better to the important stuff because the important stuff are these Leshax. They do the most of the damage. So we actually are able to apply perfectly even with our close range ammo on these guys. And you can sometimes see that your shields go down a bit low, but it's all right. Just boast, just make sure you pay attention so that you don't forget because it has happened once that I was like not really paying attention and my shields went down and I just didn't, I forgot to pre press the boost. So just keep that in mind. You need to uh, pay a bit of attention here. Don't don't uh, sleep so that you forget it because they can do a lot of damage, but you also have a lot of boost rate as well. You can see here we've got this isk right here. This means that they're not going to spawn in anymore and we have completed the wormhole siege. Now, you wouldn't even need to destroy these guys. You can go around and hunt them in the system, but I prefer to just clear, full clear this whole um, wormhole fleet right here because just you kill these guys, you get more isk. It's really good. If I was good at salvaging, maybe I would actually get these guys cleared a bit quicker. But you may as well do this in a sniping fit. Like, I have tried this in a sniping paladin, and I'll be making videos on this in the future. The sniping ships have got very good potential for this. One good thing about doing brawling stuff like we're doing here, where we're sitting at zero on the spawning point of these Triglavians, is that our mobile track units don't have to work very hard to the pull stuff in. Because if we're kiting, sniping, then they have to work a long time to pull them in. So you'd have to probably have a, a dedicated salvager to actually uh, do them at like a, at a reasonable pace so that you're at the same pace as you're destroying them. Now we are still not destroying them, but at least they have been pulled in. Because if you're sniping, then they'll still take a very long time for a mobile track unit to pull them in. They wouldn't even have enough time to pull them all in by the time you've destroyed everything. Be wary of gankers. Keep your local up. Just make sure you have typical gank corps like Code and those kind of people uh, set to red. Because this is an expensive ship you're flying right here. You wouldn't want to get ganked. I know it will be tempting here to deploy your salvage drones when there's only like two of these guys left, but I have done it before and they really hate your salvage drones. They're going to focus them straight away and salvage drones are very weak in terms of their HP. They'll just pop them almost straight away. So only deploy all your salvage drones if there's no Triglavians left. All right, now that they're all destroyed, we'll get a full focus on looting right here. Especially in the beginning, I think it's good to just focus on killing these guys rather than looting. But when you get more experience, you can try focusing more on uh, salvaging at the same time. I'm still not good in general at uh, multitasking stuff, so I still like to just focus a lot on killing them. But if you get very good at salvaging, you can definitely do this at the same time as you're uh, killing them and pretty much salvage at the same rate as you are actually destroying them and not have to waste any time afterwards. But we've got everything pulled here with our mobile tractor unit, so it's not going to take a whole long time. So we're going to open the mobile tractor unit. You can see here we've got some nice isk from these items right here, 29 million. Pull this in right here. We also have a bit of a cargo hold shortage right here, unfortunately. But we can just dump stuff in that restock station we had uh, before. And then we're going to be looking also then what we got in total in the salvage because there's a lot of isk to be had from this salvage. In fact, the majority of the isk you get here is from the salvage. There we go. Salvage all these wrecks. We can just uh, grab the MTU back here. Remove this bookmark. And we can see here from this small encounter I had, well, not small, but this wormhole encounter. I got 39 million isk. And this is actually quite a low amount of isk. Usually from these wormhole sieges, I get about, I don't know, 50 to uh, 80 million isk. So this is actually more on the low end where you can find here, but it's all right. Sometimes luck is good, sometimes luck is bad. So what we're going to be doing now, and if you want to earn more isk then, is just to simply hunt the roaming Triglavian fleet. As you can see here on the D scan, there are plenty of them roaming around at the Celestials. So the planets, the customs offices, 
even sometimes moons, but that's quite rare. Uh, the sun, they are on often the planets in the sun. That's the pretty much 95% of the time you find them there. So before we do that, I'm just going to go back to the restock station, deploy all my loot there so that I can get a bit more cargo space. I always carry at least 7,000 of these two torpedo types, 7,000 Rage, 7,000 Kaldari Navy, just to have a good supply. Because, I mean, if you were to somehow run out during this, uh, I'm not sure you would be able to survive if there is a scrambler on the grid because it's going to be hard time for your drones to destroy uh, stuff when there's a lot of remote reps on the grid because the Triglavians, they do do have remote reps. It could be that their remote reps overpower your drones and you won't be able to destroy that one uh, scrambling frigate that's holding you down. I've got this one filter right here you can use to just filter out all the loot. If you go on my character name, show info, bio and then you can see here invasion loot so if you click on this save this you can have a filter here for invasion loot or the trigger larvian hunting loot so you can have all that easily accessible to dump it into the uh, the item hanger so we'll put all these items right here there's a lot you can see we get some meta modules as well not just the trigger larvian stuff put this in here there we go okay we'll go and hunt more trigger larvians you see that there's some on the grid the way to find them then is just to click hold down c Click on one of these celestials and do five degree. So let's see now. Okay, what about the sun? Nothing here. What about this planet? Nothing here. What about this planet? Nothing here. What about this planet? There we go. We found something here. Uranianen IV. Uranianen 4. So we're going to just warp within zero on this planet right here. Activate hardeners. And we can see that there's some Leshax and some Drekvax, so we can actually preemptively load Nova Rage because that'll be the most optimal type of missile to use against these guys. All right, you see here, we warped straight into this little fleet of Trigolavians, so we can just launch the MTU, Bastion up, and lock these guys up. We can even save this location for later if we would ever need it, and get to work. Sometimes you'll find that Trigolavians are sleeping, but when you kill enough of them, they'll occasionally wake up, or they just won't respawn at all and sleep forever when they die. <laughs> See here, now they're starting to aggress me. And what happens is that they can have then the fleets respawn in, and this is where the big isk comes in, and this is where it depends a little bit on your isk power. Sometimes they'll be, like, say I were to kill these guys, and then they would respawn in new Triglavians, and then they would respawn again another Triglavian wave, another Triglavian wave. Sometimes they can spawn in so many. I've had like 8, 9, 10 waves of Triglavians spawn in. Then you can get way more than 150 million isk an hour. But sometimes it can be like it is right now where they don't respawn and you can get a bit on the low end in terms of your ISK power. But we've got some quick ISK right there, some 4 billion because the server data is worth quite a bit. And occasionally you won't find the Triglavians, but then you have to just warp to some other planet, for example, if the system is big because I can now see Triglavians. Oh, we just happen to warp into them straight away. That's kind of cool. Sometimes it can happen that the tri uh, system is a bit quiet for a bit. There's no Triglavians at all spawning. And then sometimes you'll have so many Triglavians spawning that you're just like, come on, will you ever stop spawning so that I can salvage? That's how it can be sometimes. We'll load Kaldari Navy here. Again, the DPS priority is the Leshax, then Vedmax. Uh, the Damavix and Kikimoras can obviously do damage when they spool up, but it's not that much. It's not that much. The majority of the damage is in those Leshax and Vedmax. Again, they seem to be sleeping right here. <laughs> Let's hope they spawn in a big reinforcement wave because they can. Like uh, sometimes they can spawn in so many that you get nervous that will they like spawn in like a world arc or something because they seem so furious that they spawn in so many. Get some salvage operation going on. You can even lock up stuff and track it in them as well to be extra efficient. Help our MTU out a bit. There we go. We got some reinforcement fleets now. Cool to see. Because it means we're just going to get more ISK. As you can see here, focus Vedmax. Then we're going to focus the leg strike as well. And obviously, don't forget the boost. Your boost cycle is just so, so like wide on how much shield this covers. It's like half your shield is covered by one cycle. It's just really crazy what this uh, booster can do. And it's not even the most expensive booster either. This is the Pith X1. The Gist X1 is more cap efficient. Uh, so and it's got better fitting space but costs a lot more so you can actually probably fit two of them if you wanted to get two of the gist x large ones to go all out on the tank there we go that fleet it seems to be eliminated and there doesn't seem to be any more that are spawning in from here again these are very small fleets we've just encountered right here you can find potentially much bigger fleets than this much much bigger like sometimes from you can see here from one of these encounters right here let's see how much loot we've got so far so we've got 14 million from that previous one and this one right here 
and it's not at all a lot this is not at all a lot uh, sometimes from one of these encounters it's not at all uncommon that you can get 100 200 million isk from one of these encounters right here because they'll just respawn in here so much you can see our tank is not being challenged at all because they can they can just spawn in much more than this this is not nothing this is also what made me underestimate these guys that caused me to lose a Kronos because I found a lot of these weak fleets right here. I was thinking that, oh, there's just, you hardly need any tank. And then suddenly just pff, these really big ones came and then I just got annihilated. Now there doesn't seem to be any trig lava means in the system. And this is how it can be sometimes. Sometimes the system can be quite quiet for times. But that also means that as long as the wormhole is here, just just be patient just be patient maybe go watch a movie or something because when they do respawn i found that they tend to respawn big when it's quiet like this this means that the triglavians are forming up a big fleet <laughs> it's my anecdotal experience now we find a slightly bigger fleet right here that seems to be an uranian n2 so we'll warp to this planet hope this is a mega fleet that respawns a ton of them in so that you guys can get an understanding of both like what the low isk side will be and what the good isk side will be. All right, deploy mobile tractor unit. Bastion. Nova Rage to go for the Leshax and Drekovax first. Then we'll get to work. So as you can see here, with the precision script, we have 48 kilometer range and these guys orbit at like 43 kilometers. So we'll never have issues with range. The only times we'll have issues with range, if there's a lot of ghosting guys, they do tracking disruptor or guidance disruptors. So they might make your range go to like 38, 39 kilometers if they're like hard uh, tracking disrupting you. So just keep that in mind. Then you would want to switch to the range one. But otherwise you'll, most, you'll like very rarely have issues with uh, your range. And we can take some of these boosters because I forgot to take them and it just shows how you don't need those boosters. Because I wasn't using them before actually. But we'll be applying better with that crash booster. Oh, there's a lot of stuff now spawning. Hopefully. Hopefully we get a good a good spawn. We can start salvage operation as well. And there's a boost up. Oop. Back to full almost full shields. <laughs> we'll take out this ghosting guy over here. Because this ghosting guy I think is going to make us apply worse. Not only have worse range, but apply worse as well. You can see this liminal Vedmac over here. He's going to do extra damage. This this one right here. He's going to do extra damage and have more tank as well. So you'll notice here, this is a Rasdenborg one. The weak one, as I said before. The Rasdenborg is the weak recon variant. So he went down very fast. Let's see how fast this liminal one goes down. Because he'll go down a lot slower. Look at this. He's going to go down quite a bit slow. See, even his shields with one didn't one tap his shields right there. So you can see it's going quite a bit slower. These Hospodar guys also tend to drop better loot. They're like actual loot they drop, not from the salvage, but from the actual loot. They can sometimes uh, drop better like uh, Triglavia server data and more goodies. Last Kikimura here. This was not actually a particularly challenging fleet either, actually. I thought this was going to be stronger, but it was not. It can definitely be more than this a lot more than this there's really do not get overconfident when doing these because you can very well get a streak of very weak fleets and you'll feel like oh i don't need to have any tank on my ship but it will be a lot worse than this in many cases okay 21 quick 21 mil like that see what we got from salvage as well now we're sitting on a total of 56 million from these last three encounters see if we can find some more they seem to be at the sun so we're gonna whoop here and I see that there's seems to be cruisers and that kind of stuff, so small stuff. So I'll be using then Kaldari Navy to just jump in straight away with. Trig Scrubbians. Seems like they're getting reinforcements here. Maybe they will escalate to a big fleet. Pop that Akikimura with one shot. Quite satisfying to see. More Triglavians warping in. Come on, let's get a mega fleet. Sometimes it can happen as well. Is that when you are like salvaging here afterwards, if you take a long time and just sit here, uh, just a brand new spawn can spawn in. Uh, it can just respawn again. I like, just happen to spawn another one here on the same celestial. It can be pretty a nasty surprise. Just keep that in mind if you're salvaging this stuff at zero on the spawning point. Uh, be ready to have to warp out if they were to spawn in a new spawn. Seems like this fleet is escalating a bit. I thought that was going to end right there, but escalating a bit more. Oh, we're getting more reinforcements. Oh, -ho. I think this is one of those big ones, guys. Might be. The thing is, I noticed that 
like depending on the fleet size it can vary a little bit so if there's initially a very big one then usually the reinforcement fleets will be very big so here the initial fleet was quite medium sized so i noticed the reinforcements are also quite medium sized or at least depending on encounter to encounter the respawn or the reinforcement fleets are usually a fixed fixed size so usually they'll be similar size each time so if you have one with really big reinforcement fleets then they are going to be always really big or there'll be at least a lot more coming in uh, honestly i think it's just a bit random at the same time as well it's just more like sometimes you notice a bit of trends that okay certain fleets just spawn in a ton of them but there is a thing, I think, that if there's two wormholes in the same system, Pochwin wormholes, because it can be that there are sometimes two Pochwin wormholes, then there can be even more Triglavian spawning in. You're just salvaging at the same time as killing. It's a good way to, good skill to master to get this to be done very efficient so you don't waste any time afterwards on salvaging. Oh, more Triglavians. Well, this is a pretty big one. It's still kind of medium sized, it's not like amazing respawns that have been occurring. So they can still be bigger ones than this. Quite a bit bigger. More reinforcements. More reinforcements. <laughs> this is not like... The waves that are respawning in are not that big. But there are quite a few respawn waves that are happening. And that's quite good. At least knowing that there's going to be... There seems to be a potential for a lot of Triglavians here. Or oh, more. Oh, another one. Wow. There's a lot of waves going in here. Even more. <laughs> Now, this is a pretty high amount of waves. This is a good amount of waves. The waves themselves, not big, but there's a good amount of waves. So think of it like this. You could, in a very, like the best case scenario, get as many waves as we've got here. But we'll be getting a lot more at the same time as well. And when I mean best case scenario, I mean best case for loot. Obviously, if we're a tank, it'll not be best case scenario because you'll have to be a lot more on point with your boosting. But it's quite chill when you have these small waves right here that are not that big. I barely have to pay attention to my tank. You could, to be honest, just downgrade your tank a bit to have maybe this flux call with a more damage module or something else. Uh, but I like the fact that we know we can run it for quite a long time if we somehow have to tank for a long time. Oh, more, more. Nice, nice. <laughs> Even more. Oh, the Nova Rage. Needs to be some battle, quite a few battle cruisers now on the grid. Even more? <laughs> oh. They just keep spawning in. They just keep spawning in. These are the ones you want to look for. The ones that have these just like, or look forward to. The ones that have these crazy respawn rates like this. It's uh, fun to know that there's all this like, sort of fun and frightening at the same time. Knowing that, oh, look how many of those coming in. Even, they don't, will they ever stop? Another one. What? I think our cargo hold is even full. So it's dumping our salvage into space into the MTU. <laughs> That's how money they've been spawning here. Hopefully it'll be some big isk. Oh, look at this. We've got even more. Even more? Um, I'm guessing maybe our cargo hold will have like 100 million in it. Maybe even more. From how many of these Triglavians have been here. Crazy. Once it happened that I was Triglavian hunting. And then it was like late at night, maybe 1am. Now I was going to go to sleep and I was just like, oh, maybe just one more encounter. That encounter took almost an hour to destroy because of how many just kept respawning. I mean, I could have just pieced out and just warped out, just killed all the ones that were potential warp scramblers, but I felt the need to just take everything. So I was awake for quite a while to destroy that one uh, encounter that was taking a long time to destroy. <laughs> more, yeah, more, <laughs> even more. So this will give you guys a really good uh understanding of what the worst spawns can be like the ones we've encountered in the beginning and what some of the better spawns can be like how we've got in here this one is really good because it's not been so many in each wave so it's making it very chill for us in terms of our tank we hardly have to pay any attention to our shield booster uh, and there's a lot of waves so still we're going to get a lot of isk you know so it's really the best of both worlds this kind of spawn right here and even more <laughs> even more there we go finally we've taken out all these triglavians in this spawn right here let's see what the grand total is i'm getting guessing at least 100 million maybe 150 million something like that maybe even more if we are lucky start using the salvage drones to speed stuff up they really help the salvage drones especially when stuff is far away you can just salvage them don't have to even have your mobile tractor unit work for that we just tracked it in stuff that has loot because we know it's going to have to be tracked in to pick up the actual loot it's carrying all right, there we go. I've salvaged everything. Let's see how much we've got from just the MTU. So just the MTU, 
is 90 million because it's picked up all the salvage that we've not been able to fit into our cargo hold. Just stack all this. See where the golem is carrying. The golem is carrying 94 million as well. So we've almost earned like 200 million from these Raznaborg fleets, not even including that first one we did in this wormhole siege in the beginning. When I have issues with the cargo space like I do now, what I do is, first of all, I just d dump all these trinary state things. These things take a lot of unnecessary space. Dump that. Then this mobile tractor unit will pick it up. So you can just uh, grab all the stuff here apart from these trinary state things like that. And we might have enough. Yeah, we do have enough cargo space. So we don't take the trinary state things, take all this in. Because these things are, take a lot of cargo space and are hardly worth anything. So now we've got all this stuff in here. So we can you know obviously come back to pick this up so we can just go to the restock location dock here and then just come back and retrieve the stuff dock here item hanger already at 223 million and then we can go and pick up our mobile tractor unit i've got this mobile depot in here i don't really i just have it there just in case but you really don't need this i just have it there in case i would ever want to refit the stuff so there we go my guide on using the golem for solo triglavian hunting and some really good isk really good isk and it's in high sec as well so you don't have to be any corp or anything you can just do this completely solo so i think this is a pretty fun interactive activity where you're fully utilizing the marauders capabilities hope you guys earned some nice isk and if you learned something new or just enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe i'll catch you guys later